In her article on The Yellow Wallpaper, Denise Knight provides a critique on the short story by Charlotte Perkins Gilman that has not been explored by many critics and has never been brought up in our class. While most critics believe that Gilman's narrator is insane because of the controlling patriarchy, medical care from her husband John, Knight argues that her insanity is really just an act of rage and rebellion against her husband. Knight contends the feminists that read this story as ignoring the intelligence of the female protagonist because they immediately believe that she is mentally ill. Knight uses comparisons of the narrator to female narrators in other stories of insanity, contrasts the original manuscript of The Yellow Wallpaper with the version printed in the New England magazine in 1892, and briefly analyzes Gilman's life in relation to the life of the narrator. Knight uses the analysis of critic Richard Feldstein to back up her arguments. Feldstein calls his interpretation an ironic one by saying that the narrator is choosing to act out and portray herself as insane in order to alter her husband's view of her condition. In his opinion, the narrator's resentment at her husband's command not to work and the angry diction proves that the climax of the story is an act of rebellion and rage. These critics, Knight and Feldstein, use the symbolism of the wallpaper to further the point of the narrator's anger. She says in the book that she lacks any companionship or advice about her work, which evokes anger that she takes out on the wallpaper. If the wallpaper, as most critics argue, represents the suffocation of women in a patriarchal society, the violent dismantling of the wallpaper is an external manifestation of the narrator's internalized rage that refutes her husband's denial of her illness. The narrator writes that she gets positively angry with the impertinence of the wallpaper. With the symbolism of the wallpaper, Knight believes this quote clearly depicts her anger toward her husband and his patriarchy. Knight then relates the yellow wallpaper to Sarah Penn in the story of the revolt of mother. In the story, Sarah's husband will not build her a new house, and so she moves all of their things into the barn and calls it home. Critics call Sarah insane, but Knight believes that it is Sarah's rebellion that empowers her and leads her to such an act. Just like the narrator in Gilman's story, she must force her husband to see what he will not hear. Knight then relates the narrator of the yellow wallpaper to the character of Edna in the novel The Awakening. She is considered insane after stamping on her wedding ring and smashing things in her and her husband's home. In the end, Edna takes off all her clothes and drowns herself in the ocean. Edna is rebelling against the role of a proper Victorian woman, just like the Victorian woman in the yellow wallpaper, by removing all of her clothes. The protagonist of the yellow wallpaper is rebelling against her husband and her role in the cult of domesticity, much like the women in these other stories. Knight also focuses heavily on the differences in language and structure between the original manuscript of the yellow wallpaper and the published version. For instance, the published version adds 90 paragraph breaks to the story, making the narrator seem more disoriented and fragmented. There are many other examples of changes in the text that alter the interpretation of the story. In the published version, Jenny is described as a perfect and enthusiastic housekeeper. However, in the original manuscript, the narrator writes that Jenny is a perfect and enthusiastic housekeeper. This broken sentence resolves that Jenny is simply a housekeeper, implying judgment from the narrator on Jenny's submission into the cult of, dom of domesticity as she does everything to rebel against it. The choice of words is also different between the two copies, which Knight believes further changes interpretation. Some examples are how the published version says she she will leave her condition alone and talk about the house, while the original manuscript says she will write about the house, which is a much more defiant act as it is met with heavy opposition by her husband. Gilman also writes in the original manuscript, I never saw so much expression in an inanimate thing before, and we all know how much expression inanimate things have. However, the published version changes the second inanimate things to the word they. According to Knight, this ignores the treatment of the narrator as an inanimate thing by her husband. There are many differences between the two copies that Knight points out in order to pr prove the narrator, narrator's anger. She also focuses on the word choice by Gilman that exhibits the sense of rebellion and anger. For example, the narrator resolves to finish the wallpaper. Knight senses anger here because the word finish can also mean to kill or to destroy. Knight spends a very long time in her article discussing small details in diction that can change a reader's understanding. To prove the sanity of the narrator, Feldstein points out that she is able to make coherent and rational thoughts during the entire story, even during and after John's fainting spell. In her journal, readers can see the narrator's thought processes and understand what she is saying. 
she decides killing herself would be too dramatic an action and she would make people believe she is insane. Instead, she simply wants to astonish John and defy his perception of her role in the home. At the end of her article, Knight briefly acknowledges Gilman's relationship with her husband and what she says in Why I Wrote the Yellow Wallpaper. While Gilman writes that she is speaking out against her doctor, Knight quotes letters that she wrote to her friends that talk about the pain she feels with her husband and how he thought that her story was the most ghastly tale he'd ever read. Gilman was pressured into marriage, and Knight believes that she is deflecting obvious criticism away from her husband, Walter, but uses him for the basis of John, who she writes about with intense rage. Knight claims Gilman is vulnerable and ashamed at her reluctant submission to a marriage of servility and must write about her anger against her husband in a more subtle fashion. I really enjoyed reading Knight's article because it gave me a new outlook on the narrator's insane outbursts at the end of the story. I had not thought about her actions as an act of rebellion against her husband, but rather as an outburst because of her husband's treatment. However, I did feel like sometimes in the article, Knight made strong arguments but didn't have much textual evidence to back them up, leaving me curious if she was going too far in her assertions. In my paper, I plan to contrast this article with the heavy criticisms on mental health care in this story and what exactly Gilman wanted to convey in writing this story. Thank you.